Now Android is lovely enough as it is for sure, but slapping a launcher on top can be a great way to freshen up your smartphone and can completely alter the experience. Think of Android as a heap of salty chips and the launcher as the cheese and gravy or a huge whopping dollop of mayo, making an already brilliant thing even better. Now I've tried out dozens and dozens of Android launchers over the years and yeah some of them are a buggy sack of arse drippings. But a fair few of them are well worth dipping into especially as the majority are either free or cost just a couple of quid to unlock the full premium version. And so here's my roundup of the best Android launchers that you can download from Google Play right now and by best I mean my personal favourites. You may of course disagree in which case just do what everyone else does and point out what an absolute c face boy I am in the comments that would be super helpful thank you please thanks and for more on the latest and greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers now one of my long-term favorite android launches is definitely still that all-time classic nova the nova launcher has been around longer than sir david attenborough and like our much treasured death defying nature lover it only seems to get better with age Pretty much every aspect of the Nova overlay can be meddled about with. Everything here is fair game, from the transitions and the icon visuals to the app store and animations. And Nova offers impressive gesture control as well. So for instance, you can open up straight to specific features when you swipe across an app icon rather than just tapping it. And of course, pretty much everyone and their dog has tried out Nova Launcher by now. It's by far one of the most popular Android launchers on the Google Play Store. If for whatever reason you haven't though, go check out my full tips and tricks guide right here on Techspert to see it in action and to see if it's worth upgrading to the Prime version. Long story short, yes. And there's big changes are coming to the Nova Launcher as well with a fully revitalized version 7 currently still in beta. This is actually a complete reworking from the ground up to allow for faster updates while also pumping in loads of extra customization including improved gesture support, all kinds of stuff. And hopefully I'll be able to bring you a full review of that really soon. I've also got a lot of love for the Poco Launcher 2.0 as well as popularized by those brilliant Poco smartphones. It's fast and super light, it won't pilfer your phone's resources or sap your battery. Now definitely I'm a fan of that simple minimalist design. The stock Android layout hasn't been molested at all, just tweaked with plenty of cool little improvements. So you've still got an apps tray thankfully and this includes groups of apps based on type so you can quickly access all your games, your messaging apps, media streamers and so on. Or alternatively you can also cluster them based on the icon colour. And you can also easily pull out that notifications bar by swiping down from anywhere on the desktop. This is of course a pretty standard feature on modern Android launchers and it is an absolute godsend in 2021 where the average size of a smartphone is about the same as your bloody TV. And as usual you can conjure the Google Assistant with a swipe from the corner. A nifty desktop shortcut can be tapped to cleanse the memory and speed things up when needed and despite this simple layout there's still a fairly respectable level of customization. You can chuck in your own icon packs as well as playing around with grid sizes and other shenanigans. And yeah in terms of the customization obviously the Poco launcher much simpler than the likes of the Nova launcher but if you just want something that's neat, tidy, simple to get to grips with and will run well even on older or slower Android devices then Poco launcher is a winner. On the flip side, if you are definitely a fan of that clean stock Android experience but you do desire some deeper customization, then have a squint at the Hyperion launcher. At a quick glance, there's little to distinguish Hyperion from the standard Pixel launcher, but like Nova and others, there's some impressive depth here once you dive underneath that shiny surface. All the features you'd expect are packed away in those settings, including some smart gesture support for easier one-handed use. You've got plenty of control over the UI theme, including the color schemes, the animations, and the icons. Plus, you've got the ability to add folders to your app store, and basically so much stuff that couldn't possibly go into all the loveliest bits right here. But overall, it's still a pretty damn smooth experience. Note, however, that to unlock all of the premium features, including full gesture support, you will have to stump up a couple of quid. Not exactly bank-breaking, though. Now similar to that Hyperion launcher is the Action Launcher Pixel Edition which again retains that sort of stock Android vibe but adds a buttload of customization. And I also rather like the boringly titled but still quite brilliant Customized Pixel Launcher. Just remember to spell Customized the American way, not the correct English way. Now occasionally I get asked about how to tailor Android to suit older users and those with limited sight. And while Android does have accessibility features built in, I'd also highly recommend checking out the big launcher. As with the other launchers I've reviewed here, you can grab this for free from the Google Play Store and it offers up a very simple streamlined UI. Only the most basic essential smartphone features can be accessed from the main desktop. You've got nice clear oversized icons and up top you can very easily see how much signal strength you've got and how much battery life is remaining. The fonts are easy to read and there's an SOS feature as well which can immediately call and text your key contacts once it's tapped. All in all, great stuff. 
Now another launcher option for anyone with a slower or older smartphone is definitely the Pair Launcher, another fast and light option that works well even on those older handsets. On the surface, Pair is nice and neat and simple, very stock Android, except that you can tweak the icons, folders, fonts, backgrounds, colors, and other bits to suit your liking. There is a good amount of customization here, but you won't feel swamped with options, even if you're new around these parts. And if you want to unlock all of Pair Launcher's features, including all the extra gesture support, such as the two-fingered swipes and a bit of shaky shake action, well, that'll just cost you £1.39, making this one of the cheapest premium unlocks in this best Android launchers roundup. And if you do have an old or a very budget Android device, then definitely check out Lean Launcher too. Again, it's lighter than a lettuce salad, but it offers full customization of the desktop grid and the app store with the ability to hide any apps you don't want others prying on, plus the usual gesture support and all that good stuff. Another brilliant oldie but goldie Android launcher that doesn't mess around with that stock Android look and feel is the Launcher launcher, which is now available in a far improved second version. Like the others here, you get a good selection of customization options. Pretty much everything you see can be tweaked and fiddled with. You can keep the likes of the Google feed if you download the separate lawn feed plugin or ditch it entirely if you'd prefer. And I like the selection of gesture shortcuts too, which allow you to easily yank down that notifications panel, hibernate the phone or load up your favorite app. And best of all, the lawn chair launcher is completely free to download and enjoy from the Google Play Store. So even if you do try it out and decide it's not for you, you won't find yourself out of pocket. Lovely. Now one Android launcher which I used to really like I included in plenty of my previous roundups was the BlackBerry launcher which sadly doesn't seem to be supported anymore but you'll still have to pay a subscription after 30 days of using it otherwise have lots of adverts flying at your face. So basically and to put it politely it can take a short walk off a big f***ing cliff. But a more than worthy alternative to the BlackBerry launcher is the excellent Microsoft launcher which in its current version 6 is a very frisky wee devil indeed. The overall performance has improved over time while the devs have added in some new worthy bits like a proper dark mode making a slick and enjoyable launcher even better. It's not vastly different from standard Android, but with a pleasing aesthetic and some bonus bits that I rather like, such as an expandable dock to stash away more of your favorite apps, to the lovely feed which is basically a scrollable page of widgets that you can customize to your heart's content. The Microsoft Launcher is completely free to download and enjoy, and thankfully in its current incarnation they've squashed most of the original bugs, so it's definitely worth a gander. And if you get all misty-eyed thinking about those Windows Phone handsets from yesteryear, you'll adore the nostalgia-driven Square Home. This tile-based desktop operates in pretty much the same way, dishing up a wall of dynamic icons that can be resized and reordered, complete with up-to-date notifications. I gotta say, using this launcher, it really does make me crave those wonderful, glorious days of super bright yellow and orange Lumia smartphones. They were good times happier times. You got a few neat little tricks thrown in here like the ability to set up cube tiles which can be fully rotated to reveal even more app shortcuts. Next up is Niagara Launch which serves up a very different style of presentation taking a very streamlined approach to your desktops. Instead of cluttering your screen with a grid of apps you get a short list of your favorites up to 8 in all, although your other apps can be quickly opened using the Cascade and A to Z index when needed. After spending some time with Niagara, I think I actually prefer this system to hiding everything away in an app store. It's neat, it's efficient, and it means you don't get distracted by other shiz like social media which will just eat into your valuable time. And Niagara can make your life nice and easy in lots of other ways as well. If you're playing music or an audiobook, some handy media controls will pop up on the desktop for fast access. You can swipe right on any app to check out wait notifications or to jump straight to certain features, while a swipe down will open that notifications tab. You do get some simple customization here, including a choice of light, dark, or ultra dark theming from the settings panel, but the UI is very straightforward, so there's not actually that much to tweak. So what it boils down to is, if you want something that's quick and simple to use, but will also help you focus throughout the day, well, the Niagara Launcher is an absolute blinder. Now, one of my favorite Android launchers that hit Google Play at the end of last year is Ratio, which was previously one of those posh, ooh, look at me, invite-only efforts. But now it's slumming it with the rest of the common launchers on the Play Store, and that's actually a pretty good thing because it is rather lovely. Ratio has a similar minimalist vibe to Niagara, this time separating your apps into category drawers that you can fully customize, as many or as few as you like. It's neat and tidy with a handy search bar if needed to find your apps or actually search within apps, plus a dedicated section for messages from key apps like WhatsApp. You got a surprising amount of customization here too, including grayscale or color options, selection of wallpapers, different icons for the drawers, all that good stuff. Ratio isn't quite perfect, for instance swiping home from an app you'll see your original Android wallpaper for just a beat before Ratio kicks in, but Ratio is free and funky and rather nice. 
Now, another good choice for anyone who wants to really streamline that Android experience is the Kiss Launcher, which sadly has got bugger all to do with the age and makeup love and glam rock band. No, rather the Kiss of the title actually stands for Keep It Simple Shit Face, or something like that. Forget your traditional desktop experience, there's no widgets here, no multiple pages, although you do still have an apps drawer. But all you've got there on the desktops is a search bar, which you use to find whatever you need, be it app, contact, or even a specific setting. As you search for bits, they'll stack up in your history, so you can fast access stuff that you use a lot, where you can also add anything that you like to a row of permanent favourites housed at the bottom. Once you get used to this arrangement, it is surprisingly intuitive and it's a great setup if you find yourself getting distracted by other apps and other bits quite a lot, just like that Niagara launcher. And you've got some customization thrown in for good measure, although obviously it is pretty basic compared with a lot of the other launchers mentioned in this roundup. Best of all though, the KISS launcher is completely free to download and use, so you've got no excuse to not give it a go. And another one that I quite like that's got a similar sort of vibe to Niagara and KISS is the Before Launcher. If you haven't checked that out, definitely give it a squint. And let's end this roundup of the best Android launchers in 2021 with another oldie but a goldie, one of my favourites, the Smart Launcher 5, which again has improved a lot over time just like that Nova launcher. The idea is that your home page acts as a sort of central hub. You can fill it with icon shortcuts to your favourite apps, while swiping up reveals the app page, where you'll find all your stuff sorted into categories. Swipe right to access a selection of cuts from Microsoft News, which isn't the most customizable effort, but it's still pretty decent. Meanwhile, swiping left serves up the widgets page, which you can cram full of your favourite goodies. And if you swipe down, you'll access the search page, which can be used to quickly access a specific app or contact. Thankfully, all these pages can be rearranged or removed entirely from within the Smart Launcher settings, so you can set up your handset however you like, and there's a shed load of customization if you're willing to stump up for the Pro version. Gotta say though, that Pro version certainly ain't cheap. It'll cost you 11 quid at the time that I shot this video. It's slowly creeping up in price, but if you want to, you can check out a trial version for under two quid that lasts a month, so you can at least see if you're gonna get some worth out of it. And because there are more decent Android launchers out there than there are Steven Seagal films. I sadly haven't had a chance to cover all of my favourites from over the years right here in this roundup, so like the EV launcher for instance. But I'm definitely very interested in hearing your own personal favourite Android launchers that you might have tried out, especially any new ones that are up and coming in 2021. Please do uh, clue me into those down in the comments below. Hopefully you'll be able to get another roundup on the go soon with some of those. Until then, for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell and have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers everyone. Love you.